This video will discuss the restrictions that are placed on heat engines by the second law of thermodynamics. So in a heat engine, we have a variety of closed systems. So we have what is called a hot reservoir with some high temperature TH. We have the heat engine, which receives heat from the hot reservoir. It then pumps some amount of heat to what's called a cold reservoir at some temperature TC, the cold temperature and it uses some of that energy to do work on the external environment. So the key thing here is that the hot temperature is greater than or equal to the cold temperature. And we're gonna see how much of this heat that gets pumped into this heat engine from the hot reservoir can be output to the external environment as work and how much of it has to be heat that is pumped to the cold reservoir as is restricted by the second law of thermodynamics. Okay, so during this process, the delta U of the engine, the change in the internal energy of our heat engine is equal to all the places that the energy can go into or out of the system. So it's equal to QH, the heat that they receive from the hot reservoir, plus QC, the heat that is pumped away to the cold reservoir, plus W, the useful work that's done on the external environment. So this could be something like uh, pushing a piston to propel a car, uh, pushing some kind of hydraulic fluid to uh, lift some kind of mechanical equipment, anything that humans might find as useful work that we use, that we use engines for in our everyday lives. All right, so what is the entropy change during this process? So the entropy change of the engine is equal to uh, the reversible heat that comes from the hot reservoir divided by the temperature of the hot reservoir plus the heat that is pumped to the cold reservoir divided by the temperature of the cold reservoir because our, well, not necessarily the delta S of the engine but the delta S of the universe because we're interested in the heat that is occurring uh, and the entropy that's occurring over the total universe here. All right, so we have negative W is equal to QH plus QC. So since delta U of the engine equals zero, we have W equals minus Q minus H. So W equals minus W equals QH plus QC. So if the magnitude of W equals the magnitude of QH, then all of the heat that is pumped into the engine from the hot reservoir is going to be output as work to the external environment that would be a 100% efficient engine. If the magnitude of the work is zero relative to the heat that's pumped in, then that would be a 0% efficient engine. So the maximum efficiency of our engine that is possible is going to be the negative work divided by the heat of the hot, heat coming in from the hot reservoir. So the negative work is equal to as we saw here, QH plus QC. So that's QH plus QC over QH, which is equal to one plus QC over QH. All right, so let's see what we have about uh, getting what this ratio needs to be now. <clears throat> All right, so we have our entropy here, and we know that that needs to end up being greater than or equal to zero. So we have QH over TH, the heat from the hot reservoir divided by the temperature of the hot reservoir equals negative of the heat that we pump to the cold reservoir divided by the temperature of the cold reservoir. So QC over QH is equal to minus TC over TH. So substituting in our maximum efficiency there for QC over QH, the maximum efficiency of our engine is going to be one, which is 100%, minus the ratio of the cold reservoir temperature to the hot reservoir temperature. So when does our engine get 100% efficiency? We can only get 100% efficiency when the temperature of the cold reservoir equals zero. So when the temperature of the cold reservoir equals zero, then any tiny amount of heat that we pump into the cold reservoir is sufficient to satisfy the uh, the second law of thermodynamics because we have a very 
small denominator leading to a very large value for what our entropy change is here for pumping heat into the cold reservoir. And our, our engine has 0% efficiency when the cold reservoir equals the temperature of the hot reservoir. So <clears throat> if there's no difference in temperature between these two, then pumping heat out of the hot reservoir has to be matched by the heat we pump into the cold reservoir to make sure that the entropy change of the universe is positive. So this is why engines have to operate at some temperature which is typically above the room temperature. For example, the engine of your car might be 100 Kelvin above the temperature of the external atmosphere, giving it a, an efficiency that's in the order of, say, 25 to 30 percent. But typically, uh, we want to maximize the difference in temperature between our hot reservoir and our cold reservoir in order to minimize the amount of heat that we need to pump to the cold reservoir in order to satisfy that the entropy change is going to be positive and the second law of thermodynamics is obeyed.